welcome 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 if this doesn't scream festive i do not know what will we are back again to take you on a salivating journey i am talking about a virtual journey of cooking if you want to know how we made all these special dishes you are definitely in the right place because we will be preparing marvelous dishes for you to enjoy this festive season and the year on out this is a very fantastic time to be in the kitchen and today we are joined by someone who is an expert in what he does i am talking about none other than chef eric malinga he is joining us to help us prepare nice nice meals for the festive season and he said conventional doesn't work here because every dish he turned up a notch if you want to see how all of this was prepared then please do stay tuned born and raised in the kingdom of Eswatini, in a humble home of six him being the youngest chef eric malinga has always found himself in the kitchen cooking up a storm. His parents allowed the young man to explore his love for food, eventually producing him such as an amazing chef. It was not easy for him to realize his talent as a career path to take. It was dominated by women. However, it did not stop him as he somehow managed to always find himself drawn towards the kitchen. Now, Let's see who Chef Eric Malinga really is in our kitchen. We are definitely still feeling the vibrance in this kitchen. I am talking all things festive, Christmas, New Year, all, all around the year for the next year being 2023. We have invited our lovely chefs to tell us what we can enjoy throughout the festive season and most importantly, dishes that you can make for you and your family to enjoy in the comfort of your home. They are bringing the restaurants to your kitchen and it is no different. You heard that. We have invited Chef Eric Malinga to join us in the kitchen as we prepare something twisty vibe. It is definitely going to go down in this kitchen. And one thing about this chef, he is preparing things that I cannot pronounce for sure. So he will be taking over to tell us about the three meals that he is preparing today. And one thing that he said um, today is that our starter, I pegwa, acting with your stuff in it was a little starter list. Well, you drink it, in fact. Um, it is definitely a drink. We're going to be enjoying a drink while we prepare the food for you. So that's our starter for today. Um, Eric, welcome to your special of this festival's cooking show. Thank you, thank you so much. And hello to the viewers at home. Um, briefly, they have highlighted who Eric Malinga is, but who can you say from the horse's mouth, who is Eric Malinga? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a tough question, but I'm a simple guy. Mm -hmm. I'm a professional chef. Mm -hmm and i focus mainly on fine dining okay yes but i can do anything that has to do with food yeah all righty and just let's head on over to it um you have prepared something very special for us for the start i see you've got everything laid out already it looks nice it looks summery because you know there's a bit of heat um you said we're going to be incorporating a lot of ice so can you just take us through firstly the starter the main and the dessert and then we head on back to our starter to start preparing it okay so what we have here it's an otai so it's oh. going to be a watermelon and mango otai oh, so it's a tongan drink so it's refreshing and yeah. <laughs> you're throwing me out the bus yeah yeah and then <laughs> for our main course we'll be having a seared beef fillet okay. or beef tenderloin okay and it will come with a uh, herb spice jus mm. because jus. there's no christmas without jus which is a sauce <laughs> you're using very very complicated <laughs> words to explain this but anyways do yeah. continue and it has a starch of potatoes and sweet potato mustard mash. Okay. Then we'll have an Asian green bean um, sautéed vegetable salad. Okay. With a, a topping of bacon bits. All right. Then for our dessert, we have a white chocolate pistachio cheesecake. Okay. Which will then add a little bit of touch of moringa. Moringa, the yeah. green powder yes. that people use for many other things. Yes. Today we're using it for a dish, um, dessert. 
Um, I think we should start. I'll wash my hands quickly and then oh, you can demonstrate. Please tell the viewers at home what ingredients you have for them. Okay, no problem. And for our starter, Chef Eric Malinga will be making a mango and watermelon otai. It serves two to four people. And the ingredients are one ripe seedless watermelon halved and sliced, one ripe mango de-seeded and sliced, half a cup coconut cream for watermelon, half a cup coconut cream for mango, ice cubes crushed, half a jalapeno sliced, and orange sliced to garnish. So what we have here in front of me, we have watermelon, we have mango, as well as coconut cream. And then we have mango, uh, sorry, orange slices, jalapeno, and watermelon just for the aesthetics, yeah? Okay. And then we'll be serving it in this cool cups, okay. or cool glasses, yeah. So please start, show us the method. Okay. How do we go about it? So now what we're gonna do, we're going to mash Mash. Yes, mash our watermelon. watermelon. So our watermelon, you can use the behind whisk. In the kitchen, I feel like you can use any other tool. You yes. know, substitute. Even here or this side, but okay. I think let's use this side. Okay. Because we want the juice. All right. Yes. So we mash it like this. So the reason we're not blending this, mm -hmm. we want the particles to be, you know, uh, an experiment or right. an experience. Okay. Rather, yeah. So you want it to be a bit pulpy? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I don't know why I made that face. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> um, what are other um, fruits that you can substitute this with? Because uh, if you can't get mango, uh -huh. you know, right now, okay, mango is in season, but um, throughout the year it's not there. And yeah. watermelon has, you know, its time. So uh, what are other fruits that you can use to make this drink mm -hmm. without these certain fruits? So I've tried one with pineapple. Okay. So and pineapple is always yeah. available. So pineapple is very, very sweet as well. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to add any sweetness here because these are already sweet uh, fruits. I so can if you like, smell the mango. yes, if you like, you can add honey. Oh, but okay. today we won't add honey in and case someone doesn't have all right. honey. <laughs> yeah. And if you can tell me, ubunani pele pele in a drink or in a starter in this case? So, as we'll be cooking together here, you'll understand that I'm more into, you know, presentation, oh, color. Oh, okay. Yes, so with the jalapeno here, I just wanted something green. I didn't want mint mm -hmm. because a lot of people use mint. Yeah. Yes, so something that you can help me with. Now, okay. it's ice. All right. So we're going to crush that ice in your brown wooden container by the bottom oh, there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh huh. So. Wait. I think we have. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was looking for as well. Teamwork. So yeah, we're crushing. Yeah, you crush the ice. Yeah, you can use this mark. Thank you. So whilst you work on that, I'm going to pour my ma my pineapple here. So the measurements for this uh, recipe. Mm -hmm. It's up to you. You can According use to how much you yeah, like. how many people you have okay. for the serving. So what I did now is pouring my watermelon crushed watermelon, watermelon. In, in the glass. Okay. Then I'm going to set this aside. I'll borrow our very special tool um, to crush the yeah. ice that you have tossed me with. Uh-huh. Okay. So now we're going to rinse our bowl here. You know, this is a first for me because I think we have been, this is a very hot job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have been uh, making starters that require us to go to the stove a lot. Yeah. And people don't really know that 
A starter can be literally anything, anything yeah. but the starter has to be food. Yeah. Um, <laughs> please advise them otherwise, um, if you can. Okay. Um, what are other starters that you can prepare that don't really um, involve the... That you could pair maybe with um, something, something. No, this you need to respect it <laughs> because it's from Tonga. So Tonga, I used to have a Samoan friend. Okay. So they used to teach me how to do these kind of things mm. during my my young age years. Okay. Whilst in Zambia, so okay. I just wanted to share it with you guys today. And speaking of your younger age and your days, um, where did you start falling in love with cooking? Um, how did it come about? Was it from frying an egg, or <laughs> you saw someone specifically in your home? Um, you know, cooking, and that's where you started engaging with the whole process. Or is it just something that you know people grow into something, yeah. and maybe you realize na somta la wote ati tin. I think na tin ya chance a pay. You can use this one. Okay. So for me, it, it started at a very young age. I think I was eight or seven years okay. where I first baked my first birthday cake. Your for own a birthday cake. Ah? Yeah, <laughs> it was crazy. I didn't know how to, you know, do the measurements, but for some weird reason, it all tied all together. That that client had to be close to you. Not really. It was like a neighbor. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty close. They asked you to to prepare a cake for them. Yeah. Charging from what? Because. Had you prepared a cake before? Never. I, I had like a, a small business, so I used to sell popcorns and, and what else? At age seven? <laughs> yes. Yes, popcorns. Yeah, I think it was popcorns. Yeah. So you've always had this business incorporation into your cooking. Yeah. And that has led you to who you are today. Yes. You've kept it from a young age till now. Yes. How has that worked out for you? I it mean, has, learning things from a young age. It has really helped me because it kept me humble. Mm. Because I, I understood how it all started and how I wanted people to, you know, feel when they are, like, eating. Okay, that's done. Whatsoever I serve. Yeah. Yeah, so it was like an inspiration in short. So, so yeah. one is mango, one yeah. is watermelon. Yes. Different flavors. Yes, different flavors. Oh, I thought that uh, you're going to mix the the mango and the watermelon. Nah, I want you to to taste both. Oh, oh so are they both <laughs> mine? <laughs> I can take both of them. Trust me. <laughs> so what we what we did here? So it was the watermelon and ice, and here it was mango and ice. So now it's the time for garnishing. Okay. So it's almost like your cocktail type yeah. of presentation. What did you say it was? Oh. It's an othai. Othai. Yeah. From? Tonga. Tonga. Yeah. <laughs> now it's our coconut milk, okay. coconut cream. So in most countries, like other African countries, I see there's some um, ingredients that feature most, like uh -huh. for coconut. Um, some people make rice and coconut cream yeah, um, yeah. you know many dishes they feature symbol um, yeah. what are ingredients that since you are into more, more like Asianish cuisine which you mentioned um, what are some ingredients you can advise the viewers at home to use that we often shy away from just like the moringa powder yeah that's something new for me okay but it's something that really made me love my presentation as well as the color because i'm all about quality and as well as the presentation apart from the flavor obviously mm -hmm. flavor has to be there so with the different ingredients um let's say with the starch in short yeah okay. a lot of people love yeah. which yes it's, it's good but we need to try and taste other starches like more quinoa, yes. or my lentils, mm. include oats. Yeah. oats. You know, as a, mm. you know oats. You can oats make it as a starch breakfast. for main course. Oats is for breakfast. 
I'm joking, but how do you use oats as a starch for breakfast? Let me keep uh, that as a surprise for now. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll let you know. When. Are you making it today? Are you no, featuring? not today, oh. not today. In yeah. future, yeah. What do you mean in future? You'll see. We we'll need see. the secrets because this is the festive season. What we are trying to do is give people new things uh -huh. to do. Okay, I can share a few, few skills and tips. Mm -hmm. So you can add like your mushrooms as if you're like sauteing. Okay. Mushrooms, your onions, your spices. Almost like making a risotto. Oh, okay. And then you add the oil. Yeah. But it will still provide that sticky and a yes. consistency. Yes, yes. So... It's up to you to try that, Babugele Makai. So let's finish with our drink so we can taste it mm -hmm. and head on over to our main for today. So here we have our otai. Okay. Watermelon otai. Look at that. And mango otai. Look at that. So you can serve it using your, your spoon. Nostrils, please. Does the, the, the jalapeno give it a bit of a chili-ish taste? Not really, it's just for the color. If you want, you can just bite on it like a snack, mm -hmm. since I, it's a starter. I am not going to do <laughs> that. Um, I think we should taste and then no problem. move over to our main. This is the drink we'll be having throughout the show. Yes, so use a teaspoon. Okay, you mix it up. Yes. Okay. Mix it up, mix it up a bit. Mm. Yeah, mine just spilled. Okay, the presentation was nice before the mix. Now it looks like a, a bit of a milkshake. Okay, yeah. so can I get my first taste and then we move yeah. over to... Don't look at me, <laughs> you're making me nervous. I, I I understand. Yeah. I understand. This is really, really different. I think nice. I could finish this. Taste this one as well. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's nice to be here, Shame. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to decide which one of my favorite now. But anyway... These will be our drinks up throughout the show. Let us move on over to our delicious main, which I still cannot pronounce. Mm -hmm. But hopefully by the time we eat it, yeah. I, I'll be able to pronounce it. No problem. Let's go. And for our sweet tooth lovers, we have dessert. And our dessert is a white chocolate pistachio cheesecake. The ingredients are 100 grams white chocolate chips, 250 ml cream, 150 grams pistachio nuts, 10 grams vanilla essence, 230 grams cream cheese, 10 grams moringa powder, 10 grams gelatin, 50 grams butter, 100 grams tennis biscuits, 100 grams digestive whole wheat biscuits. All right. But depending with the time. Okay, so I think yeah. let's get preparing. Okay. Um, so now we're going to start with our cream cheese. Okay, that goes into that bowl. Yeah, so we're going old fashioned today, not using a blender. A blender. <laughs> <laughs> old fashioned <laughs> whisking. <laughs> yeah, and then we have our cream here. Okay. So another trick with cream, you need to eat it while it's still cold because if it's not cold it won't it won't that, foam yeah. up okay so we'll start with the cream here oh in separate bowls yes separate bowls and there's another method which i'll teach you all right so how you use a whisk with this you you hit by the corner here oh instead of the it's up to and you. that is actually wow that is actually making the consistency thicken up faster. Yeah. So some use this left and right thing. Yeah. Method. So us we're doing that this. That takes corner. longer and yeah. takes up a lot of energy. Yeah. And another thing, you need to make sure that you don't over whisk. Yeah. Because there's a good mass. So how do you know when the right time to stop is? When it starts to thicken. <laughs> Just make sure that you check. Okay. 
here. So we whisk, 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 and then. Yep. So for you, what do you normally do on Christmas? <laughs> I eat. <laughs> Consume. Consumption, that is me. That is what I do on Christmas. Uh -huh. I'm joking. Um, it's just, for my family, we usually prepare dishes differently and we come to enjoy them all together. Okay. It's not that one person is preparing the whole yeah. Christmas lunch. Oh, so there you have it. Yeah. That is actually a faster method. Yep. But your hands need to be very, very, very energetic. And yeah, strong. I can tell that. Hey, Lena. I think I tried to sing them a message. Yeah. So for us growing up, we used to, you know, cook as a family. Mm -hmm. So that's where I think you most fought. of the talent and my gift was groomed. But then, refined. did you? Um, do any professional training that led to Chef Eric Malinga? Is that how you earned the title? Yes. It's flattering all over. Yes. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I think that's the joy of cooking. <laughs> you can't cook and remain clean. I versus Doc Soda, but you to So now it's our cream cheese. Yeah. So yes, I went to culinary school mm -hmm. at the International Hotel School. Yeah. Where I became now a professional chef. So the reason I went to study to become a chef is because when I came back from Zambia, I wanted to have like a catering business, business okay. and a restaurant. Mm -hmm. But you know people, they don't want to see good things happen. So <laughs> it didn't happen. Oh. They. oh, okay, yes. So they helped me because I then got the opportunity to go and study. Oh, okay. Because I was like, no, it's not going to happen in this side. So let me try and do something with my talent. With your time, yeah. even. So before the schooling and earning the title professionally, you were already engaged in this cooking business. Yep. What were you doing there? Were you catering? Um, were you cooking for like families? What were you doing specifically? So I was doing a bit of both family and corporate mm -hmm. and that was like my intro to discovering what I was going to become. And what's your biggest gig so far <laughs> when it you. comes to cooking? Besides your own achievements yeah, yeah, um, yeah. that you've done on your own. When you when when they called you and they said, Eric, uh -huh. we need you on this one, bro. <laughs> um, which one was your your biggest one? I can say Weddings, Bushfire and Luju, mm -hmm. so I'm not yet sure which <laughs> one is the big one, but yeah, those are like my best. Because that means there. you cook from your heart. If you can't yeah. even pick, it means they are all your favorite. True. So, so what we did here, it's our cream, Okay. our cream cheese. So what we're going to add here, oh, there's this method okay. called folding in. Okay. Yeah, so you don't stir. Yeah. You fold in like this. Oh, okay. It's a mixture method. Yes. Just like the whisking method where you beat. Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to add our icing. You mixed your cream. Cream cheese and cream. This is the icing. Yes. All of it. Yes, all of it. So it's like a, a half a cup. Okay. Because we use 330 of the 330 grams of, of the, the actual packet. Yes. Okay. The cream cheese, and then 350 mils of the cream. Um. Actually, you also have something that is melting down in the oven. I think we had nice. <laughs> forgotten about that. Um. You have your white chocolate going. Is it white chocolate? Yes. So there are different ways to melt chocolate. Yeah. You can put a pot with and hot water, water yeah. or water, yes, and then put it to a boil. And then put your bowl and melt it there. Any bowl or? Yeah, any bowl. Normally, yeah, it's, it's, no, normally it's the <laughs> see-through one. You see that yeah, one? Yeah. Or the tile. Okay. Metal one. And then you just add your, your chocolate. Yes. So for me, my chocolate was, okay, my, my oven was open before okay. I put my chocolate. All right. So this is like a crime 
in the culinary history. <laughs> yeah. You don't melt chocolate in the oven. Yeah. But you know, for we're looking for other ways to do things, especially True. for the viewers at home. Yeah. They are not professional chefs, um, but they're trying to make good food. Mm. So any way that you can do it, they want to learn. Yep. So if it means throwing it into the oven, yeah. then that's okay. What are some other cheats actually that you have in the kitchen um, that can help them uh, do things quicker? Okay, just like this one, it's a cheat. And another thing, when it comes to cooking vegetables, okay. a trick that I've, I've learned is to like boil water mm -hmm. and then soak it in and, and pour it in a bowl, then put your vegetables there and cover okay. so it's almost like pre-blanching oh. your vegetables because there you know would see if you put it in the the pot you have maybe less time maybe a minute to cook, yeah. Or two, yeah if you're not like a professional chef or cook mm -hmm. yeah that's another strategy you heard that that's where you mixed your cream you mixed your what was in uh, cream cheese and cream Okay, and then what do we do with our tennis biscuits and our digestive? So, with our tennis biscuits, we need to crush them. So here I've added chocolate and the vanilla extract. So I'm going to pour it in here. Okay. In my mixture. Oh, I actually thought the chocolate was going to be the base then. Yeah. For a second. So, can you please rinse it so that we can put our biscuits inside? So as you cook, you need to taste. Okay. So a chef needs to always have a spoon. But if you could just tell me, what guarantees the sweetness in this dessert? Are we even looking for sweetness when it comes to this dessert? Because um, dessert is about the sweetness. And if you want to engage everyone, I think that's a common, it's the, yeah, yeah. that's the thing to do. So with this one, the main sweetener here is the white chocolate. Okay and the icing but it has to be the oh chocolate. yeah you did put in some yeah. icing so whilst you smash or crashing your biscuits there okay. using uh this whisk let me rinse it for you these biscuits work as a base for the, for the cake piece. okay is it better to maybe keep it overnight in the fridge because I'm someone who doesn't specifically enjoy cheesecake that much. Uh -huh. But I think when it goes a day or two, I like it even more. So yeah. for it, can you make it and then enjoy it same time? You, you can. If you want, you can put it on the, in the fridge maybe for like two days or three days. Okay. Yeah. For the biscuits to you know to set properly. Yes, set, set properly with the filling as well as the, the crumbs. Okay. So now I'm adding my salt as well as moringa. Okay. Will it not turn green with the moringa? It will. Oh. So with the pistachio, it has to be like a green colored cheesecake type oh, of thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I knew yeah, I was thinking. <laughs> okay. So I'm pouring my pistachios here. So you need to leave some for garnish. Do you want them fine, fine biscuits? E, not really fine, fine, fine. I like texture, so remember that. Okay. Yeah. I'll keep that in mind. So this is our cheesecake. It's all nutty and green. Oh. Yeah. It's not your classic cheesecake that is just all white. Yeah. It actually gives it a nice color and you know, a bit of a difference. Yeah. So we're going to add some gelatin here. 
for it to sit. Oh, okay. Yeah. So directly onto. Oh, well, you have to pour it with a bit of liquid. water. Yes. <laughs> I was thinking, how will that one work out? But we learn new things every day in the yep. kitchen. There's like a tea, uh, spoon. Okay, tablespoon. Yep. Warm water. Uh, we'll make. Uh huh. Uh uh. No, you were saying make sure. Make it's sure dissolved. when you're yes. <laughs> <laughs> you need to make sure that it's dissolved. Okay, I hope I've done. Please yeah, don't continue. fire me. Continue. Okay. Yeah. Because here I was given a task, a job to do this. I hope I'm doing it very well. Yep, you are. So you dissolve all the gelatin uh -huh. in warm water. Yep. Um after you've done your mixture of cream, icing, sugar, white chocolate, yep. um, I'm sure that, I am pretty sure that yeah. this cheesecake is not something that you grew up eating. Um, nope. What is a dessert that you can um, vividly remember from your childhood? I guess it's everyone's favorite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to, you know, not destroy the tradition, yeah. but to come up with something new, if more innovative, trifle. yeah. And why, well, how can you say you added to us to trifle right now? Do you still have it the conventional way? I think that was the best. I think it, that it, was, it was the different best. layers yeah. and colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just chose green because there's green in the Christmas theme yeah. colors. Yeah. Okay. So, so trifle yeah. for both of us. I mean, every family. Uh huh. Every family loves a good trifle. So now I think our gelatin has dissolved. So I'm going to pour it here. Okay. And then put it in the freezer. Okay. For about like 10 to 15 or 30 minutes. You put the mixture as it is. Yeah. In the freezer yeah. for 10 to 30 minutes. Okay, so now that we've prepped our dessert, it is gonna go into the freezer for about 10 to 15 to 30 minutes um, until it sets basically because yes. there is gelatin in that and you don't want to consume it quickly because it might just give you a weird weird texture and then when we come back you will see us adding um, all the things together and layering our cheesecake you know until it is nice and aesthetically pleasing of course it is now but it gets better with time so chef um, while that sets goes into our freezer. Mm -hmm. um, I think we should, you're going to add the butter to the... Yes, we have to melt our butter. Okay. In a pan. And now that we have done all we need to do for our dessert, all that is left is for us to prepare the crust of the dessert or the bottom part um, that will layer our dessert, which are, we have our tennis biscuits, our digestive biscuits. Now our chef is going to be melting the butter and adding it on into um, our biscuits. What texture is this supposed to give, Chef? It needs to be liquidy. L no, I mean the, 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 the tennis. The adding the butter into the tennis biscuits. Oh, so it needs to be wet, a little bit muddy. Firm, yeah. itoy, yeah. mold. Yeah, Let's say bring it boomba. Yes, itoy mold. It boom, baby, yeah. It boom, baby. <laughs> So now our butter is melting in here. We're going How to many stir. packets of tennis biscuits did you use? So I used half the normal size, okay. which is 250 grams. Okay. Then the biscuits, 100 grams, okay. the digestive biscuits. So here with the butter, it's 80 mils right. or half a cup. And once it's all melted, we mix. We mix. Yeah, then Set aside. You set it aside, you don't immediately press it. press it down. So it's not like your normal cheesecake where you like yeah. cut it with the layers. So I'm introducing a little bit of my expertise, like fine dining it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now our butter's ready. You speak about fine dining, which is a conversation that I will be having with you when we prepare <laughs> our main um, dish, which is...
still think that I cannot <laughs> pronounce, but it is fine. I don't need to pronounce it. I can just eat it. Yeah. So, so uh -huh. we're done with that. You're going to mix it up, set yep. it aside, and then when we return, we will be preparing our delicious main. For our delicious main, Chef Eric Malinga will be making a pan-seared beef tenderloin chopped with spread jus and a potato and sweet potato mustard mash accompanied by an Asian green bean salad with bacon bits. And the ingredients he used are salt and pepper, 1 kg beef tenderloin, 80 grams butter or olive oil, 10 grams rosemary, 10 grams thyme, and the herb jus. And for the potato and potato mash mustard, he used 1 kg baby potatoes, 1 kg sweet potatoes, 100 grams green mustard, 1 spoon fish spice, 80 grams butter, 50 grams crushed garlic, and salt and pepper to taste. We have certainly had a good day in the kitchen, but it does not get any better because right now we will be preparing a lovely, lovely main to accompany all the food that we have had. I mean, we had that Otai drink. The mango was my personal favorite. So if you want a more subtle one, you can go for the watermelon, but the mango was definitely my favorite because it had that sweetness to it. But right about now, um, the chef, I think the main on his own consists of hundreds of dishes to create the main. But um, he is making a very, you know, it's like a three-course main guayon. <laughs> because he said it's a pan-seared tenderloin or filet steak and what else, chef? So we have, a, we're going to sear our beef mm -hmm. tenderloin. Okay. So we're going to do the simple stuff, which is salt and pepper. Okay. And we're going to have our Asian green beans, okay. which will just show you guys how you can put a twist to it mm -hmm. using this hot sauce. All right. And then we have our mash. All right. Yes, we'll show you everything. And your mash is slightly different because yeah. it is, but we'll get to see that. Yes. But the ingredients that it entails are sweet potato and potato. potato. So, yeah. We'll see what flavors that bring out when we get to taste the food. Uh -huh. And of course, the Asian salad. It's salad in a salad. We in for a pay wash. Salad in for a salad. Actually, si bitang lettuce, si bitang is now what's in there in the salad. So it's called mang lettuce. What's the difference with this one? Does it go to the stove? I see that you have green beans there. Are you going to be cooking anything? Because Hey, one thing about chefs, you can have anything raw. Yeah, <laughs> That's sure. what I learned. Uh -huh. So here we have our bacon, mm -hmm. which we're going to make it crispy bacon. Okay. We have our eggplant, we have our garlic, ginger, ginger butter, stripped uh, red onion, okay. and green beans. All right. So if you like, you can add asparagus. Oh, okay. So this is a sub substitute, or you can put both. It's a cheaper version. Yes. Okay. So what we're going to do here, we're going to blanch our green beans. Mm -hmm. So blanching is like not boiling. Yeah. It's... Siya wenya emandini la Yes, For two minutes. Yeah. Because of the quality control of the... Of the vegetable. Yes. Yeah. And then we're going to add some curry spices to the egg, the eggplant. So this is it our brings. masala. Our masala spice. and our, so these are the spices, masala and raja. And these are spices that you can get at any um, mm -hmm. store. This is what's going to make it an Asian Fruity flavor. habanero chili sauce. Yes. Okay. And our Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. So if you like... If Worcestershire sauce, please, I'm going to ask you, Chef, we have to go to Stella and vocabulary. Hey, Worcestershire sauce. So you can add even a soya sauce. Okay, yes. If you want a darker color. Mm. I, mean, I just wanted a fruity color, but a little bit darker. Okay. Yeah. So here we're going to use this salad, green, colorful salads here for okay. our garnish. And oh, a jalapeno okay. and an orange. Orange in a salad. 
No, for our garnish. Oh, for garnish our, for the meat. Uh, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. And then this is for our jus. Mm. So as you it's can herby. see, yeah, uh, yes, it's parsley, oregano, uh, thyme, and oats. rosemary. It's, it's called thyme. It's, it was, it's thyme. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's whatever. rosemary, garlic. We'll add a little bit of mustard. Okay. Then there's this other sauce, sticky plum okay. sauce. So we're going with the fruity flavor on this Christmas. I can already imagine the flavors because, you know, you've got a lot of sweetish flavors, uh -huh. um, which is what Asian food mainly um, is like, yeah. which is what you prepare mostly. Why Asian food? Um, okay. Having grown up maybe in... Uh. <laughs> I was, uh, uh, I'm from Keke. Yes. Yes, but yeah, I'm in Bawan now. In, in Eswatini. Yeah. Where do you get this Asian food inspiration? So, the same thing I told you, mm. I, I went to Zambia. Okay. So I was exposed to different types of cuisine, like your Thai, your Korean. So this is what I wanted to at least change a little bit in this Christmas you know, okay. set up. All yeah. right. Let's get cooking, Chef. Perfect. So what are we going to start with? We have our mash. So we already like cooked our potatoes and and okay, Ooh, it's baby potatoes and okay. sweet potatoes. Okay. So I peeled the, the skin. Orange one. Yeah. Okay. So I, I peeled the skin of the sweet potato and left the potatoes for a reason. I like texture. So, so we're going you, to in the mash you yes. want the Yes. Yikes. So okay. what we're going to do now is smash these potatoes. Our whisk has been working overtime um, today. So you can see. <laughs> sometimes you don't need the blender. Yeah. <laughs> and what are tools that you always have in your kitchen um, when it comes to, you know, keeping things in your kitchen? What is your favorite tool actually in your kitchen? Is it your knives? Uh -huh. um, is it your pots? Um, your plates? What's your favorite tool? That's or, a good question. Yeah. So my favorite tool is this whisk. Okay. It's a grill pan. Okay. Then my knives. Yeah. All right. The knives. Without and knives, it's like a chef being naked. All right. Yeah. Do you have special knives that you? Keep in a certain drawer that no one can touch. Yeah, it's my knife case. Yeah, it's over there. But the the main knife is the chef knife. Okay. Yeah, which is this one. All right. That's from your knife. knife case. No, this one I liked it because it's black. All right. It's, 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 yeah, it's for, for today. For the aesthetic. Yeah. <laughs> so as you can see here, we're trying to mash everything. So if you like, you can add butternut. Mm. Yeah. And even the sweet potato can be the purple one. Okay. Yeah, it's up to you. As long as it, is, it has, it has like color. A, you know, the flavor. The but also the flavor. color that it provides, I think, add, adds a twist to the dish. Because if the potato is white and then you also add the, the other um, white sweet potato, it doesn't make it as True. aesthetically yeah. pleasing. We have a lot of ingredients here. Uh -huh. um, which I've kept, you know, I've kept a conversation for this very moment. <laughs> um, if you can tell me about, I, I still want to pronounce it right. Uh huh. Kukofa. Is it Kukofa or Kukofe? Or because the fa stands for fashion, and I don't know how yeah. you abbreviate fashion. Um, if we can just uh, let us know about that. It's a an event that entails design, fashion, food, uh -huh. how does that come together? How does it all work out together? And you had already um, this year an event that you hosted, Wang mm -hmm. maybe. <laughs> but anyway, that's a story for another day. Can you please just tell us about Kugofa or Kugofa? Yeah, so Kugofa is an abbreviation of culinary gourmet fashion, yeah. which is my company partnered with my friend in Fawati Zizamini. Mm -hmm. So we have, okay, what we normally do, or oh, our niche is like food, mm -hmm. fashion, and, 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 and art. And, yeah. Yeah, so we're planning on 
exposing more of what Google Bar is mm -hmm. in the coming year. So if if you are available, you can come and check it out. I'm always but, available for food. But yes. You don't have to ask me twice. <laughs> We're adding butter now. Okay. So butter. Here's another secret I want to share with you guys. Okay. So I don't normally... Share your secrets. Yes. So this one is a spice which goes with anything. Mm. Eggs, salad, any type of meat. Yeah. So it's fish spice. Oh, okay. Yes. We're going to add it here. Oh, so this butter, in a mesh. Yes. Butter and fish spice, which is like a spoon. All right. Let me just... Then our grain mustard. So the reason we're using grain mustard instead of hot English mustard, mm -hmm. I want the... The grainy, yeah, you like the texture, grain. as you said. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to add salt and pepper. Okay. So whatever you cook, always remember salt and pepper is like... Your standard, meat. standard ingredients. Even if you put like your spices, salt and pepper has to be there. What can you say is your favorite dish to make? Okay, I don't have a specific one, but I enjoy Thai food or healthy food. Mm. I don't know if maybe I'm going to be a vegan in the future, but I like Are you those heading healthy, in that direction? I like healthy stuff, so... Are you heading in that direction? <laughs> maybe. But you'll still prepare meat for other yes, people, of course. Yes. And, and maybe I will eat it myself. Okay. Yeah. Then are you entirely vegan? No, 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 no. I just like exploring different types of you know, cuisines and dietary stuff. have you ever prepared like a vegan food um served it to people and found mm -hmm. that it was more or less the same what are some dietary restrictions that you've been faced with when catering for someone actually okay i have this client mm -hmm. which i won't say yeah, yeah. <laughs> client <laughs> so she's like a vegan she eats anything vegan mm -hmm. so she challenged me one other day she was like if Eric, I want you to make me something ve vegan. Very vegan. Yes, yeah, so I did a six course vegan. Six? Yeah, six What course. are you preparing? Six, six course vegan. <sighs> there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot. Okay. I like, like your canapes okay. made out of vegeta vegetables. I play around with those kind of stuff. Like your finger food, oh, cocktail okay. types of stuff. Yeah. I should bring the mash back. Please. <laughs> Because it's still going to feature. Say booty when you're going to. Yes, remember I said two minutes. Hi. Yeah, sure, yeah. Shwala. So you see, you just mm. want the top part. Okay. Not everything. So it's not like you're wasting your vegetables. So you can use this for, for like your stocks, your oh, stews. Okay. So you can still use your. The rest of it. Yes. It smells so delicious. It smells meaty, actually. And I love meat, the, the, the mash. So there's this thing people don't understand about vegetarian food or vegan food. It's almost like it's meaty yeah. if it's cooked properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's what I experienced, actually, um, with s stuffed mushrooms. Uh -huh, Sometimes uh -huh. they, they do taste um, a bit meaty. Like your portobello mushrooms, the big ones? Yeah, the oyster yeah. ones, yeah. So that serves maybe as a garnish or just to add that nice texture. Yes, yeah. as a garnish or you can add it. Inside, way, inside. Yes. Mm, okay. So that goes all over our mash. And what's another ingredient that you will be adding to the mash? Um, now it's, it's ready to be served. Okay. Yeah, just that simple. Okay. Yeah. And we're done with the mash. Yep. And we're moving over to our? So now we're going to our vegetable, mm -hmm. which is going to our salad, which okay. is going to be our green beans. So this we can put so aside. You can just set it here aside. Okay. Whilst you do that, so I'm turning on my stove here. And for the Asian green bean salad with bacon bits, you will need 120 grams bacon, 10 grams black sesame seed, 10 grams crispy onion, 
salt and pepper, 100 grams fruity habanero chili sauce, 40 grams ginger, 100 grams eggplant, 50 grams red onion, 350 grams green beans, and 25 grams curry powder. So as you can see, I'm using the same water that I that used for the broccoli, for broccoli. Okay. the green beans. All right. Big white. You want to clean as you go. Yes, that's the rule in the kitchen. So we have our bacon here, which we're going to fry later. Okay. Yeah. So, so now, you heat your pans, yes. e each and every <laughs> pan is going. Yes. So this is our green beans. Okay. So if you like, you can cut like the edges. All right. Okay, it's up to you. I like the edges cut. Yes. Me too. There's so, just one there <laughs> that's left over. So in this pan, we're going to fry our bacon first. All right. So that we will get more flavors from it. Okay. Yeah, so remember, no adding oil. Because it's already a, a fatty yes. um, we we'll use the same fats to fry our vegetables there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I think we're need a spatula. Of, yes. Oh, oh, yeah. This? Oh. Yeah, but, thank you. So we're going to let that fry in here. Okay. And what are you trying, which texture are you trying to achieve with the bacon? Um, I don't want it to be crunchy. I just want the bacon flavor. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's up to you. If you want it crunchy, because yes, I mean it is a salad, you want yeah. to give it a bit of crunch. But don't worry, I have something to use. Crunchy crunchy. That salad. We have our crispy onion, mm -hmm. which you deep fry and then dry. Okay. So this is it. And then we have our black sesame seeds from that mamba. Okay. Or sesame seeds, it's up to you. And where do you get that onion specifically? Pick and pay. They sell it already like yes. this. Guys, pick and pay has been a big feature <laughs> on the <this> show. <laughs> yep. Because that's where everyone is getting their very nice ingredients to prepare their festive meals with. Mm -hmm. So tops, how many minutes to... So here it's two minutes again. Okay. Want that crunch. Mm -hmm. Then here we're just going to let it cook until that fat comes out. All right. And yeah. Then for now we're going to prepare our plating this. platters. We're so already getting closer to that glorious minute where we get to enjoy the food. Yeah. Now what are you preparing for, Chef? So now I'm going to take out our blanched green beans. They're already good to go. Yes. It is definitely smelling good in this kitchen. You know, the ba bacon gives off that, that smell, Jane. You can't resist. If you're in bed, you need to get out of bed <laughs> and come and eat. Um, chef, you have the bacon there mm -hmm. in the pan. It's released the fats that you needed. Yep. Um, is it time to take it out? I can yes. hear a crackle pop. Yes, 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 it's time. So you see, it's golden brown. Okay. So and if it's you leaving put it, fat in there. Yes. So you don't need more olive oil or cooking oil or butter or whatsoever. Okay. Yeah. So you're using the same fat to cook your? Yes, to cook our eggplant. So let's say you're not a fan of bacon, bacon or pork. You don't take pork for allergic reasons. So you can just leave it out. Okay. Or you can put maybe chicken but strips. Yo, I feel for those who yes. actually don't <laughs> like bacon. So now we're going to add our Red onions. Okay. So we're still on the salad. Yes. Because the other dish then I can get a bit confusing. Hot salad. Yeah, we're still on the hot salad. <laughs> Garlic. Ginger for that Asian flavor. Okay. Your eggplant. So it all goes into your bacon fat. Yes. 
So we're going to add our spices here, our masala. And these are, okay, no, this is the masala. Uh -huh. And you've got your... And the raja. Raja. Yes. The mild, the purple one. Yes. So curry and raja, they're like friends with eggplant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even the flavor and the smell. Yeah, it's okay. very nice. And technically, what, what are some other um, vegetables that you like to put on a plate? You know, I mean, I shy away from certain vegetables because I feel like, oh, um, yeah. like wool, eggplant. Yeah. Um, what are some other vegetables that are your favorite to you? Um, okay, I'm a fan of... Langa got your leg. Let's not watch. Hmm. <laughs> There's this other broccoli or cauliflower called an alien cauliflower. There's another name, I just forgot it. Okay. So, in that name, I'm ma cucumba or ma zulumba or something. I already wouldn't pick that in <laughs> That's why it's called an alien <laughs> cauliflower okay. or broccoli, yeah. And how long will it take you to make this salad? This one, until yeah. our eggplant is ready, which is like five to ten minutes. Okay. So now remember, fish spice. Fish spice for everything. Yes. Nearly six guns. Yes, yes. <laughs> Chef Eric has advised that no more six guns. He's got fish spice for you. Yeah. Mm. It so smells now, Asian. Actually, it smells... So here's yeah. the, the, the trick. Mm -hmm. So if you smell the curry, mm -hmm. that means it's cooked. Oh. If you don't, it's not. So now we're going to add our butter. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then this is this is the time where we all sneeze because they, uh -huh. I don't care what professional you are, these spices can make you sneeze at, at times. Yeah. What have been your worst moments in the kitchen? <laughs> uh, being <laughs> burnt. <laughs> being burnt. I have kitchen tattoos. Yeah, it's like a chef thing. Okay, no, besides, I mean, if you get burnt, sometimes you can carry on. Um, has there been a time where you had something severe, you were like, you know what, <laughs> it's my life over these pots? Not really. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> okay. I don't want to lie. <laughs> so you've always been God's favorite. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're going to add our fruity habanero chili sauce. Mm -hmm. So Angat, if you know Lama chili is la yellow. Oh yes. That's yes, the yes. habanero. Okay. Yeah. So this is a, a chili one. You can. Some people make a habanero sauce. Yes, sweet you chili can. may also work. Yeah, me, I'm a fan of chili. Okay. And I think I heard you saying you love chili as well. Yes. You're going to enjoy this. Okay. It's almost like you poured in the whole bottle. Half of it. Okay. <laughs> so you're making it really, you want to drench it in the sauce. Yeah. It's not like a salad layer. It's also a bonanga layer. Yeah. Okay. So then we add our Worcestershire sauce. I don't think um, this is an easy one to make for festive season, but <laughs> maybe if you like throughout the year or on another day when you feel like trying out something a bit complicated, uh -huh. I wouldn't advise this one for... Salt and pepper, please. Okay. I wouldn't advise this one for a quick meal for New Year's or maybe Christmas, but if you would like to try it out on a special day, this is definitely the meal to go for. Yeah, even if you put your fish spice, remember to season. Okay. Yeah. Because fish spice does carry that saltiness sometimes. Yeah. And that herby color and flavor. So you all see right. now. All done. Ooh, yeah. that looks amazing. It is. So our pots are now hot. So okay. what we're gonna do, we're gonna now sear our beef. Okay, the beef gets going. Stock. The star of the show. But I think the star will be... Two pots at a time, chef. The smoke is definitely rising in this kitchen. So you'll be preparing our... Yes, so now we're going to be preparing our jus and sauce. So we have our rosemary here. Okay. For the jus and the filet. Thank you. Our thyme. 
and time. Okay. So don't mind the sound. We need that. So we have added our salt and pepper here. Mm -hmm. Our basic. Just standard salt and pepper. Yes. Searing it now. Gonna leave it there. That looks like a, a thick um, piece of meat. How long do you pan sear it for? Um, five minutes on each side. Okay. Balsamic vinegar for our jus. Okay. Please pour for me the sauce. This is the sticky plum sauce. It's going into the balsamic vinegar, which has, ooh! You'll tell me when to stop. Yep, stop. Okay. So, here's another secret. Okay. Greek salad. Greek your cooking salad, is Yeah, vinaigrette. Dressing. Like a vinaigrette. You yeah. can use it for your jus. Okay. Shake it up a little. Let that cook. Can you pour a teaspoon? Teaspoon of oh. mustard here. All right. While I finish up our Asian spice here. Now it's getting down and dirty in the kitchen. Yep. Where does this go? <laughs> you know when you here have in the jus? so many... This is enough, right? Yes. This is a teaspoon. When you have so many and things all of going... This. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna wipe out our Who face. usually helps you out when you're preparing your family Christmas lunch? Normally, my siblings. Okay. Or Bomshana. But are you the one that prepares the lunch for sure? Yes. Unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> you are the employer of the day. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we're getting ready to plate our green bean, Asian green bean salad. Salad. So please come this side, mm -hmm. so that you stay here. Okay, so all I have to do is keep stirring. Yes. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm adding my green beans inside. All right. You see? Yes. You check the color. See the color here? Yeah. Ooh. It's definitely giving Asian. Yeah. What is this pot for? Which? This one. That pot, I want it hot, so don't touch it. Okay. Woo, it is definitely getting heated in this kitchen. Um, is this consistency perfect for our jus? Yes. Are you supposed to cook it any longer or yeah. it's perfect? Uh, let's reduce the heat. So it needs to simmer. So we're going to add our garlic. Okay, I think the heat is too much. And butter to make that silky oh, shine yes. to it. Let's add more garlic. Okay. All the garlic. One thing about chefs and garlic. What if I, I do not eat the garlic, gay chef? Ah, uh, it's up to you. <laughs> what are you preparing for me if I do not love garlic? Uh, you need to sleep. <laughs> what are dishes that you prepare without garlic? Uh, all the dishes, just that we just love It's a preference, garlic. yeah. yeah. The flavors. So you see our salad here? Almost done. This kitchen is definitely heated, but when we return, everything will be nice and prepared. The um, tenderloin will be nice and seared. Our sauce will get going and it will be a delightful time while we eat. Please stay tuned. It has certainly been a long day in the kitchen, but the reward is when you get to sit down with your family and enjoy the food that you have made together or you have made the, the, the chef of the house make. Like in this case, we had Chef Eric Malinga, who we loved having in the kitchen. You know, uh, industry. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think those two for now because I can't share much. No, <laughs> earlier on you mentioned to me actually that you are um, working on something. You did do the 
Kukofa. Um, the launch. Yes, the yeah. launch. So now you're working on something where you're going to invite people and people should, you know, buy tickets to enjoy food like True. they do for group. Yeah. Um, <laughs> can you tell us what you are working on and mm -hmm. what people can enjoy there? You know, we need people to attend. Okay. So um, we're like bringing an exclusive um, event where we'll be showcasing our culinary skills with different um, people that are willing to learn as well as be part of, part of this event because we're trying to be inspiration or mentors to others mm -hmm. and we're always trying our best to make you know that entrepreneurial type of space mm -hmm. where people can network and maybe you never know mm. it can be your moment to shine yeah or maybe get a, 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 a mentor. big gig yeah. or whatever yeah okay so lastly who are your inspirations we can see that you know you are definitely a goat at what you do <laughs> um but who do you draw inspiration from in the culinary world like maybe other chefs um that we know of mm -hmm. so growing up i used to watch jamie oliver mm -hmm. he Thanks. was known as the naked chef by then mm -hmm. And then he changed into Jamie Oliver. So growing up, seeing him, how he was very into, you know, flavors, presentation, and, you know, the different types of cuisines that you need to, you know, try to incorporate in one, one dish, which I really liked. Mm -hmm. And now he has really evolved, and I still look up to him. Mm -hmm. And I hope one day to meet him. Yeah, and maybe be like... Yeah, we'll play this, we'll play this back. When you finally do it. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, we're working towards securing the bag and achieving it. Yeah, true. Which is the plan for 2023 and what uh -huh. we'll be speaking about as we enjoy our dessert. Right now, I think let's finish off our main yep. and then move over to our dessert. Sure. It is definitely the exciting time of the day. We are having our desserts and obviously our last regards from you. Sending a shout out to all our viewers at home. Any advice you can give them for cooking? Any tips that you can give them for cooking um, for the next year? And then just shouting out a message to them for the festive season and how they can stay safe. Yeah, so I would like to say to those <laughs> upcoming chefs or cooks mm -hmm. to always follow your dream and you know always know who you are and being a hard worker and never waiting for that person to you know have that switch yeah. for you to in order to have maybe your dreams come true mm -hmm. and for these festive seasons i'm wishing everyone um, a, a good one and one that can be a uh, a moment where the family can be united and you know be a memory for a long time but yeah i hope to enjoy myself and um, but i'll be working okay yeah. <laughs> it's a busy festive for you yeah other than that beautiful um dessert that you've prepared yeah. that i'm about to enjoy you know with moringa powder which is a very different thing to add to food yeah. and of course our digestive biscuits tennis biscuits um, mm -hmm. Pistachio nuts, I've never had them before. Yeah. <coughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely does give off cheesecake. Mm -hmm. Chef, we definitely had a beautiful time today. Thank you so much for mm -hmm. um, joining us and preparing this food for us. Um, what can you say you enjoyed about this place? We are at Bako All Suits and you know the kitchen was stunning. It had all the cutlery you needed as yeah. a chef, you know, coming here and maybe visiting this place. How can you say um, it was equipped for you as a chef? Mm -hmm. So for me, it was almost like home because mm -hmm. I have almost the same <laughs> couches, <Set> yeah, <laughs> and the design. But yeah, I really like the the island kitchen mm -hmm. which made it easy for us you know to work and have more space to you know serve mm -hmm. and, and 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 enjoy yes yeah it's a very good place i like the interior i like the ambience here it's really really nice it's like being home, home. Yes. yeah 
it's home away from home. You heard that, Gebabugele Makaya. If you want to come and enjoy this place, all you have to do is contact them. Bako all suits. You will definitely enjoy it here.